Thank you, choir members. And we are reading the choir. And our potluck fellowship meal week Sabbath. Some of the folks leave, and of course they go practice. And I appreciate that as a pastor, that there are folks that have a gift of singing, which I don't happen to have, but those folks that do, they're willing to share their words. I'm thankful for that. Today we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving to God in word and song. When you think about it, of all people on planet Earth, Christians have the most reasons to be thankful to God. Amen. You know, it's so important that we see this theme of Thanksgiving in both the Old and the New Testament. Our scripture this morning was a portion of the Old Testament, the Psalm of Thanksgiving. And also Paul in his writings, the great theologian of the New Testament. In Philippians 4, 4, he said, you know, this verse, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he repeats it. And again, I say rejoice. And he also wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <coughs> you know, there are many reasons why man has fallen away from the relationship with God as you read through God's Word. But there is a what I call a law of praise that it's absolutely necessary for us to maintain an attitude of thankfulness and praise. And not only once day a year, but every day. And in this context, I found it fascinating the other day. In Romans chapter 1, Paul describes the falling away process of man falling away from God and what kind of lifestyle it led them into. And in Romans 1, verse 21 and 22, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Now notice this phrase. Neither were thankful. Did you get that? Having an unthankful attitude plays a major role in falling away from God. Neither were they thankful. But instead of being thankful, they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It's sad that there's a lot of that in the world today. It's a dangerous thing for any of us as Christians to fail to maintain a thankful attitude toward God every day. And I do thank the Lord that we have a loving Heavenly Father. I've shared some things in my past. Uh, every one of us have a past where we can reflect on how faithful God has been to us. You know, I've shared some things with you. I'm very thankful that God protected me in numerous ways. But I didn't know much of anything. <laughs> I'm just an infant. And I thank the Lord for this mess. For adopting me. Once I came to understand that, there's a text in Isaiah that became very special to me, and of course this text can apply to all of us. Isaiah 49, 15, and 16. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet will I not forget you. Amen. Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my hand. And those marks in the hands of Jesus remain there forever. In eternity we'll see those. And as we see those, we'll be able to recall our names who are engraved in those hands because it's for us that those scars are in those hands. Amen. You know, when we consider ourselves we may sometimes consider that how could God love such a sinner? You know, Paul called himself the chief of sinners. 
I've also discovered as we go through life and the closer we come to Jesus, and it's truly a heartfelt feeling, not just an intellectual thing, we will truly feel unworthy to be in God's kingdom. We will know we are only there by God's grace. And I think we're familiar with the expression, it might be words of a song, he who knows me best loves me most. That's a marvelous thing. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. So what we're going to do this morning, I'll share a few things from the Word, and also we'll be remain seated and sing a few songs together. My best friend is to us in these. So the first the song we'll sing is The Wonder of It All. <clears throat> it's number 75 in the hymnal, and I've checked with the audio visual crew, and the words of the song will also be on the screen. So I'm going to write at this time, to lead us in this, and remain seated for this song. Thank mm -hmm. you. Point of a God forsaken sinner. The 
suffering the wrath of God for us. A death that you and I will never have to die. Amen. If we die before the Lord comes, we die with hope. Amen. At that point on the cross, there was no hope for Jesus. He could not see through the tomb. He loved us more than he loved himself. And because of his sacrifice, we are told in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sin. There's no sin too sinful. You cannot go so far down in sin that there's not grace there to be found. Amen. We're back here to the Lord and ask for his forgiveness. And in 1 John 5, we are told that if we have Jesus our Savior, we have eternal life. That's what it's all about. He that has the Son has life. What a wonderful promise. I also thank God for the cross. The Christ, because on the cross, the power of sin was broken for those who choose to believe. You see, God knew that it would be impossible for us to live a righteous life, even if we wanted to, once we came to understand who he was and we're thankful for what he did. He knew of ourselves and could not live that life. And we find this wonderful, <laughs> amazing transformation of breaking sin's power in Romans 6, 11 and 12. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead unto sin. It doesn't have to control us anymore. But alive in the God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust. You see, because of Christ's death on the cross, when he died on the cross, Paul tells us we were crucified with him. The old sinful you and me died with Christ and was buried with him. And so we do not have to be slaves of sin any longer. Amen. And not even those besetting sins. You know, we all got besetting sins. We all have certain temptations that are more difficult for us than others. And we're told in the book of Hebrews, even those, Christ made it possible for victory. He said in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, let us lay aside every weight. He's talking about sin. And the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How do we do that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The blood of Jesus cleanses us of all sin and frees us from the power of sin. There is truly power in the blood. Amen. That's number 294, power in the blood.
Satan needs that song. I also thank the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've heard me talk about that a lot. It's a good thing to talk about. Um, you know, the disciples had been three and a half years with Jesus. They heard all his teaching. They saw him do amazing things, heal the sick, cast out devils, wipe the storm, raise the dead. And they themselves have been sent out on a mission, to preach the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick. But then after the death, birth, and resurrection of Jesus, he told the disciples, now we should go in all the world and share this gospel, but he said, you're not ready yet. After all that time with them, and now they had the cross to look back on. And he explained to them what it all meant. They weren't ready. He said, no, you got to wait. you got to wait until the promise of the Baptist Holy Spirit is fulfilled. And they knew what waiting meant. Waiting meant to wait in prayer. And they actually had prayer and fasting. And they prayed for 10 days. Then the promise of the Baptist Holy Spirit. And we read in Acts chapter 1 and 2. Christ gave the promise. And the promise was fulfilled. And we read in Acts 2, those first three verses. Because Jesus knew that it was through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way that the disciples would have the power to share the gospel in an effective way. It says, not you and me that convince people, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. We simply witness to what we know. But as we are filled with the Spirit, it's the Spirit speaking through us and brings conviction. Also, it's through the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus lives most fully in us. You've heard me say that many times. And that is so important. When Christ walked this earth 2,000 years ago, he could only be in one place at a time. But today, he can be everywhere in the world at the same time through his followers. As he fills his followers with the Holy Spirit, it's the very presence of Christ. Our hands become the hands of Christ. Our words become the words of Christ that we ask Him to be speaking through us. That's the ministry He's called every one of us to, and that ministry is available as we daily seek the Baptist Holy Spirit. And then when it comes to victory over temptation, remember Paul's text in Galatians 2.20. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, and I spoke about that a minute ago. I'm crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live in the life. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And then describe the kind of life he lived. He said, the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And that expression, by the faith of the Son of God, the faith of Jesus, what that means, Paul trusted Jesus to continue to live a life of faithful obedience to the Father, in him and through him. So because Jesus lives in us, remember, we are told he was tempted at all points as we are, yet he got the victory. Amen. Any temptation we face, Christ got the victory. Amen. So whenever we are tempted, all we have to do, Jesus give me your victory. Whatever it is you need. If you need to forgive someone, you've heard me say it many times, quit trying to forgive them. You can't do it. You may go through the motions. Can't do it. it cannot. But Jesus in us, we have his forgiveness to work. We simply say, Lord, give me your forgiveness toward that person. You need patience? Don't pray for patience. Ask Jesus to give you his patience. It's that simple. <laughs> that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because of the Holy Spirit, if that's the spirit, that's to be our experience in Christ. And also, it's a wonderful gift for our prayer life. As Paul said, when he talks about the armor of God, he says, pray always in all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. As we are filled with the Spirit day by day, the Holy Spirit will bring to our mind what God wants us to pray for. Amen. And as we pray that, that prayer is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And you've heard me say many times before, the reason prayer is so important it gives God the right of passage in the lives of those who pray for Him. Very powerful force on earth. And I'm sure there's not much Satan fears worse 
and seeing God's people on their knees praying to God. And I've got a feeling when we get in the kingdom and we look back, we'll realize prayer was probably the most important thing we did on earth. Amen. And Paul gives a wonderful counsel on prayer when we're filled with the Spirit, we're praying in the Spirit. He says in Philippians 4, be careful for nothing, meaning don't worry about anything. Instead of worrying about it, get everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And if we will do that, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. So let's say, hover over me, Holy Spirit, number 260. If you didn't believe in God, I, you know, you had no idea where things were getting. 
And more than like, likely, if God didn't intervene, man would also destroy himself. Because we do have that power today to do that. But I thank God that that's not going to happen. He, in his own unique way, is working behind the scenes of all the affairs of men to carry out his will. The text in 1 Chronicles 16, 31 says, Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice, and let, let men say among the nations, the Lord reigns. I don't say I understand how it's all working out, but I know it's working out just fine. God wins in the end because I live the world. And that's what it says. And if we're on his side, we win too. And one thing that's wonderful to know, because God is sovereign, if he were not sovereign, the promise he gives us in Romans 8, 28 would not be true. You know that promise. For we know that all things work together for good. For those who love God, we are called upon to his purpose. Well, if God weren't sovereign, Satan would see to it, that text would not be fulfilled in your life or my life. Now, does that mean bad things won't come our way? No. Challenges will come. God will allow those. One of my favorite stories is Joseph. If there had never been a slave sale, there would never have been a position next to Pharaoh, the second most powerful man in the world. And Joseph's family would not have been saved. So God has a mysterious way of working through the affairs of life who work things out for our good. But we can be assured, because He is sovereign God, He will work them out for our good. And no matter what we're facing in life, whatever difficulties and trials we face, we can be assured God is there and that we can be still in our souls knowing He loves us and He's working it out for our good. So we'll sing number 461, Be Still in Our Soul.
And I'm so thankful Jesus is coming soon. Amen. All you gotta do is watch the news on any given night. And it's sign after sign after sign that Christ is coming. When you see some things happening in the church today, it's signs that Christ is coming. And I can also tell you, God is taking the message of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and righteous by faith. Literally around the world to his people. Praise the Lord. God is raising up his remnant. Amen. Right now, this time. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And Titus calls that the blessed hope. And I'll, I'll, what, what a clear description that is. Christ's coming is truly the only hope we have that ultimately peace will reign in this earth, ultimately through Jesus Christ. And we find in Revelation chapter 21, God gave to John wonderful insights of what that heavenly home will be. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Jesus is coming soon to take us home to be with him forever. Amen. A place where there's only love and joy and peace. I praise God that Jesus is coming again. Number two.
When I think of the Christmas story, God used the very enemy of Jesus, Herod, that wanted to destroy him, to direct the wise men, to bring the funds, the gifts, necessary for Jesus to escape Herod's murderous rage. <laughs> Only God can do that. Use our enemies to bless us. You see that over and over again in the Word. And God is directing your life. Yes. And He's directing my life as well. He's made provision to meet our every need. Every that need may be. And I love the text in Ephesians 3.20. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. <laughs> I like those words. Not just a little bit. Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that works in us. God is able to do whatever needs to be done in our life. Whether it's in us or for us. So we most certainly should be a very thankful people. So we'll close by saying 557, come be thankful people, come. And we'll stand together for this song.